The season is over, and I still don't know who my MVP is. The MVP award this year has been probably the hardest award to decide for me. And I'll get to more of that later, but first of all, I do want to talk about it. The season ended today, and we had the last game for every NBA team today. I did low-key have some hopes for this playoffs. Like in the West, for example, I wanted it to be Timberwolves versus Kings, Nuggets versus Suns, Thunder versus Pelicans, and then Mavericks versus Clippers, which was probably basically already decided like a few days ago. And in the East, I wanted it to be Celtics against either the Sixers or the Heat, I don't care. And then Bucks either Sixers or Heat. And then I think it was Knicks, Magic. No, 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 no. Knicks, Pacers, Cavs, Magic. And a lot went not the way I wanted it to go, especially with the play matchups, because the play matchups for the East were basically set in stone. But in the West, it was um, the Lakers, Warriors, Pelicans, Suns, all of them fighting to see who would make the play and who would make it. And now, here we are. The Thunder are the one seed. The Suns barely made it out of the play-in, and now the Pelicans have to win to get in. And, I mean, to be honest, things didn't go exactly the way I wanted, but that's how basketball is. Things don't always go the way you want, and it's still gonna be an entertaining playoffs, regardless, because it's the playoffs, it's the NBA. We have a bunch of amazing talent this year, so I'm excited to see what happens. But yeah, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be fun. Now, back to the main topic for this video. I'll talk more about the playing in tomorrow's video. Hopefully, tomorrow. Hopefully. But, MVP conversation. So, from the beginning of the year, my prediction was to win it either Luka Doncic or Nikola Jokic. And Joel Embiid, from the beginning of the year, was an overwhelming favorite because he was going absolutely, oh my goodness. He was averaging, what, 35 points a game, 36 points a game. He was going crazy. And it looked like he was the front runner. He was the um, undeniable winner of the MVP award. And he was gonna get his back-to-back -back like Giannis and Jokic did in the previous four years. But then he got injured. And I was so devastated when he got injured because I was like, he was having one of the best seasons of his entire career. And then it all stopped because of injury. And it sucks. But because of the 65 game rule, and also because he didn't play like majority of the rest of the season, he had to sit out. And now, here we are at the end of the season with three really good candidates who are kinda ahead of everybody else, but still major, like majorly undecided. First, I'm gonna talk about the guy who I think doesn't really have a case to win it even though he does but is not as strong as the other guys cases and that's Shea. I don't know why but I've been seeing a Shea Gildas Alexander MVP um, narrative pushed on the internet for the past week or two and it's been something. I mean of course the Thunder are the one seed and he brought them from a 10 seed to a one seed. People bring that up all the time. He's one of the best scorers in the NBA right now. He's unstoppable. He's a pretty solid defender leading the league in steals, tied with De'Aaron Fox. And overall, he's had an amazing season, leading this young Thunder team to the one seed above all the other teams in the wild, wild west. It's a pretty impressive accomplishment, if I do say so myself. And Shea's Canadian, so I even got that little connection to him. I, I, I like Shea, but I don't know, because Shea has been great. He's been consistent, probably the most consistent player in the NBA this year, almost. But I don't know, man. I just think because he's brought, of course, there's always that best player in the best team case. And of course, with Tatum this year, he's the best player on the actual best team. It's just his team was a lot better. And he's not like the sole reason that they're winning games. When you look at this Thunder team, without Shea, they're still really good, but they're definitely not making it as far as they are, or as far as they actually did this year. So you can see Shea being a big part of that, but I still don't think he deserves the award 100%. Do I have a real reason to justify him not deserving the award? Not really. He's 
one of the greatest scorers I've ever seen play on a basketball court, but not really. I mean, let's look at the other candidates because when I look at the other candidates, it really justifies having Shea, or I guess blindsiding him. Because Jokic and Luka, man. Nicole Jokic, I, I'll start with him, won a championship, and I predicted them being three seed because the past few years, every single team that won a championship was a three seed the next year. The Warriors were a three seed the next year, Bucks were a three seed the next year, but um, am I missing anybody? I mean, it was the Lakers before that, but they were really bad afterwards, so I guess that doesn't really count. The Raptors are the two seed the next year. The sec they, they don't usually get the one seed. And even this year, the Nuggets got the two seed. So, I guess my prediction didn't come true. Two, three seed, I guess it still goes along with the pattern, but still, I predicted that the Nuggets would be the three seed and that Jokic would still be a top runner, a top front runner for the MVP award. And he still is. I predicted, I, actually, if you look back, I did predict the exact top two runners for MVP, Luka and Jokic. And I mean, that was kind of impressive on my part, but at the same time, it wasn't that hard to predict because those two are amazing, like ridiculous. This is a little slightly off topic, but a little interesting note, the top three candidates for MVP this year are all foreign born players. I guess foreign born because Shea is in Canada, but still foreign born players, not born in the US something to think about but yeah with Jokic it's just he's the best player in the NBA and it's I mean of course the MVP isn't always the best player in the NBA but he's been so dominant and it's been so hard to stop that Nuggets team when he's at his best and I did think about Jokic because the reason Jokic or at least the main reason I see Jokic not winning last year is because he had a rough stretch at the end of the year the team wasn't winning games, and it wasn't looking good for them, and Embiid was doing better than he was, so Embiid got the award. This year, there hasn't really been much of a huge negative narrative at the beginning, at the end of the year. I mean, maybe a little bit for Shea, because, um, but then again, he was out for some time, so I guess that's not even, that doesn't even count for anything. But still, um, Jokic just has been amazing all year, and... Of course, this if he did win, this would be his third MVP. And it's a very, very rare occurrence that NBA players win three MVPs. I think the last person to do it was, oh, oh well, of course, LeBron. If you look at the past, I remember there was a list of this in like a Jimmy Howard video or something like that. But if you look in the past years, NBA players have won three MVPs. LeBron, MJ, I'm doing this off the top of my head, by the way, Magic, Bird, Kareem, Bill Russell, Will, maybe George Mankin, I don't know. But you get the point. It's a very, very elite list. These are the best of the best players in the NBA. Best in NBA history, matter of fact. Like, if, even if you look at some of the other best players in NBA history. Kobe, one MVP. Shaq, one MVP. Um, KD, one MVP. Curry, two MVPs. Hakeem, one MVP. But you get the point. Most players in NBA history don't even get more than one. And Jokic already has two and he's on the verge of possibly getting his third, which is crazy. And that's why, of course, I don't know if he'll win it. I don't think he'll win it because of voters fatigue. But does he deserve to win it? I'm not gonna look at the stats yet. I'm gonna save that for the later part when I talk more about all these candidates in general, but he definitely has a huge case. Second seed, He's um, just been amazing all year. He's been the root of his team's success. When he's scoring and passing at the level that he's been doing it all year, the Nuggets are almost unstoppable. And I did have, yes, this is what I was gonna talk about earlier. I did have a theory where how to stop Jokic if you just let him score and stop him from passing the ball. And I mean, that theory is somewhat true because it has worked sometimes, but it's still a little iffy. So I really don't know. but. I guess what I'm trying to say is, it's very, Jokic has a great case. It's very, you can't really find any holes in this case. Really the one thing going against him is voters fatigue and voters fatigue. I mean, the defensive side of his basketball has not even been super, like really exploited a lot this year. 
he's still been that good. And it's just, the offense is so overwhelming. It's just hard to, yeah. And I mean, we saw Wemby shut him down a few days ago when they lost to the Spurs. But I mean, still, it's like, Jokic is still amazing. This is another slightly off topic thing, but something I loved about, something I love about the NBA, something that happened just like before the last day of the season. The top three seeds in the West were all tied with the same record. And I think it was like, Two to two to eight in no, yeah two to eight in the east or two to seven in the east was still like completely undecided like nobody knew who was gonna get those spots and in the west it was man it was chaos like from all the way from like six to ten and then the top three seeds in the west of course like I said before just complete chaos it was wild but we had all that sorted out today and now we know who's gonna face who. And I mean, except for the plan, obviously, we, we don't know who the top seeds are going to face, but we'll see what happens. I'll talk more about that tomorrow, hopefully. But now to Luka Doncic. Luka, Luka, Luka. Luka, I have been pushing to win an MVP for like the past two, three years now. I've been wanting him to win one. And this is finally the year where he broke out and he finally has that case because the Mavericks are good. Kyrie's hooping. He's helping Luka get here. And Luka has been absolutely ridiculous. I'm thinking, if I remember correctly, averaging like 34, like 11 and 9 or something like that. Something along the lines of that. Very close to averaging a triple-double. He's been ridiculous. And it's so very hard to not name the MVP just based off those stats alone. And it's just... When you see what he's doing on a night-to-night -night basis against every team like you sometimes i look at games and the first half luca has like 30 and it's like okay yeah game over there's no what do you even do he's super unstoppable and this team that he's leading with the mavericks they built a really good team around him honestly this year with daniel gafford pj washington Derek lively kyrie dante exon tim hardaway jr it's a nice little team over there in dallas and they can make some noise in these playoffs we'll see of course but it is a very, very good Luka year. And the arguments I can see for it, there's a lot more arguments against him than against Jokic because against him, you could say, oh, well, he's the five seed. Oh, well, he's not. He's still not that good on the defensive side of the ball. And I mean, it's not like people are exploiting that like crazy, but still it's like, it's not like Jokic where he has barely any holes in his game. He's not undisputedly the best player in NBA. Even though some people want to call him that, I don't, I don't, me personally, Jokic is just another level. But Luka is very, very good. And this is why up to this point, I have not been able to decide who my MVP is. But that's the point of this video, to decide. Because I have to do my award show in like a week or two. So I might as well figure it out now. Okay, so looking at the exact stats, Luka led the league in scoring with 34 points a game. Jokic led the lead, league in win shares, but of course, if it's advanced stats, if it's advanced stats, bet on Jokic, you know what I'm saying? And I know, I'm now realizing this entire video, there's a, been a player, a very, very good player, who I've completely blindsided, and that's Giannis Antetokounmpo. And the case for him is strong, He's averaging 30, 11, and 6 with a steal and a block. Amazing offensively, amazing defensively. Really not many holes in this game, just like the other guys on this list. He might be legit most of them. Like, he might just be the second best player in the NBA right now. I mean, you could have a debate about it, but it's, in my opinion, he is. And it's just... He's on the three seed. The team's been really good. They haven't been amazing, but they've been good enough to give him an MVP award. But I don't know. He has, he's really declined in the MVP conversations, especially in the past few years. Like he's gotten pushes, but then all of a sudden at the end of the year, people just decide that he's not in anymore or in the race, I guess, in the, anymore. And last year, I did admit that Giannis was not having as good of a year as Jokic and Embiid. This year, it's very debatable. He's been amazing, so it's very hard to just keep him out of that conversation completely. If looking at the stats, Luka's averaging 34, 9, and 9, one steal, half a block on 48, 38, 
78 splits. Giannis, for comparison, I already said his stats, 30, 11, and 6, one steal, one block, 61% from the field, 27% from three, and 65% from the free throw line. Not great efficiency, especially when your free throw percentage is closer to your field goal percentage than your three-point percentage. I said a lot of words there. I hope, hopefully you get what I'm saying, but Shea is averaging 36 and five, two steals and 0.9 blocks. I don't think he's leading the league in steals. I probably was wrong with that, but yeah. Um, field goal percentage 30, 53, 35% from three, and 87% from the free throw line, the best out of all these candidates. And then there's Jokic, 26, 12, and 9, one steal, 0.9 blocks. One steal is actually somewhat impressive. Like, that's more than Giannis and almost as many as Luka. Not Shea, but like, still, pretty good. And then 58% from the field, 35% from three, the second best on this list, and 81% from the free throw line, also the second best on this list. And he's played the most games out of the people on this list. 78. Only missed four games the entire season. When we look at advanced stats, Jokic is probably just gonna cook because he value over replacement, he has the most, Shea is the least. Uh, box was less, he's the most, Shea is the least. <laughs> Defensively, he still has the most over Giannis, over Shea. Offensively, he still has the most over Luka. And win shares per 48 min set minutes, he is if you go to advanced stats, Jokic is gonna cook in almost all of them. It's ridiculous. True shooting percentage is, is still Jokic, but it's actually very close. Cause Jokic is 65, if you wanna go specifically, 65.0. Giannis, 64.9. And then Shea, 63.6. Luka, 61.7. So all of their true shooting percentages are through the roof. And PER, of course, Jokic has one that's over 30, which might legit be one of the best of all time. But then Giannis 29.9, Shea 29.3, and Luka 28.1. So all of them in these categories are extremely, like, very, very good. <laughs> when you think about true shooting percentage, you also have to think about or all the percentages. You have to think about field goals attempted. And Luka attempts 23 field goals per game. It was just four more than Shea, who was the second highest, and then Luka. Giannis and Jokic, but Luka's percentages, shooting percentages, might be a little lower, or at least that's what you think. The field goal percentage is lowest on the list, but the three-point percentage is the highest, and the free, the, the free throw, I mean, still pretty low, but still, I'm saying a lot of words. I hopefully, hopefully you guys understand what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of things that go into this conversation. And these four are honestly my favorite candidates to win it. I don't think Giannis is gonna, okay, First of all, I'll say who I think is going to win it. Because Giannis, I think, is just, in, based on public opinion, he's completely out of the race. Shea has a legit case, and he might just win it purely because he's the one seed and he's leading this team and it's a good story. And the narratives that's been pushed over the past few weeks has been crazy. So maybe, maybe he might win it. He has a chance 100%. And then you have Giannis, no, no, no. Then you have Luka and Jokic. And Luka and Jokic are obviously, in my opinion, the two best candidates to win it, just because of how unstoppable they've been all season and how good their teams have been. But it's so close because you also have to think about Jokic, or about the Thunder, because they've been really good. And the Bucks, even though they haven't been as good as the other three teams, Giannis has been amazing. So I think, Giannis would be out the race, but Luka and Jokic would definitely, and Shea, that's definitely a conversation. It's definitely a good conversation to have. Who wins it? Man, that's, that's a good question. Honestly, because I don't know. I genuinely don't know. And I've been thinking about this for so long, and I was waiting, oh yeah, when I record that video, I'll be like, I'll know who my MVP is. And I still don't know who my MVP is. So, I don't know, man. Um, I guess you guys will find out in my award video. But yeah, this is a good conversation. It's good to look at the stats, it's good to look at the narratives, it's good to think about all this. Because when you think about the narratives with each guy, Giannis is not much there. I mean, yeah. 
No. <laughs> Shay, the narrative is, is being pushed heavily and it's, I mean, it's pretty good. He has a pretty good chance to win it just based off narrative alone, so. Luka, the narrative is there also 100%. Jokic, I mean, I wouldn't say so much, maybe, I guess, but in my opinion, not so much. But it's very interesting to think about. And we'll find out who, whoa. Okay, that's actually surprising. Usage percentage, out of all the people on this list, Jokic has the lowest. That surprises me because I'd expect Jokic to have the highest because he's scoring and passing the most out of the people on this list. He's the least. And I mean, Luka has the most, which makes sense, but then Giannis and Shea more than him? I mean, Shea's really important to his team, but I wouldn't expect it. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. But yeah, that's, I'm not going to keep this video too long. It's already been long enough. Thank you so much for watching, if you made it this far. Um, who's your MVP? Tell me, tell me down below. I really don't know, because it's so, so tough. I, man, it's tough. I'm going to, I'm going to release my award show video, and you guys are going to know my MVP then, but for now, still undecided. We'll see, man. We will see but for now that is all thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed have a nice day subscribe it would, i would appreciate it a lot and like the video you know so let's get some more people and yeah thank you have a nice day bye